Welcome to the Ultramotive S2000 build. Just like Dustin's 335 surprise build, we have everything laid out right here and we are gonna be building this car simplistically and basically just directly improving everything, whether or not it's boring. We've kind of come to the point on the channel where we've kind of done enough different builds of different cars where I've been able to filter down what are the precise necessary modifications I want for a car. And specifically for this car, I wanted it to still be daily drivable and usable in all sorts of ways, but improved for handling and back road ripping and maybe one track day here or there. And this is what we got. So we got wheels, suspension, a little bit of lip kit to kind of balance out the aero, make it a little more aggressive. We got headlights, we got titanium exhaust and the stop tech big brake kit. And what are we starting with today? Well, today we're doing brakes, but lucky for you guys, these wheels are not gonna fit on these brakes once we install them. So therefore, you're getting wheels too. And what we have here are some very precise spec CE28 Club Racer 2s, 17 by nine and a half plus 45. Finished off in beautiful diamond black. And don't you worry, we also have uh, you know some CE28 stickers to kind of contrast and add some red flare that will also go nicely with the red stop tag brake calipers that'll be going on here. But yeah, I searched everywhere for these boys and I wanted to make sure they were fitted with some good rubber. So we have none other than the Nitto 255-40-17s uh, NTO-5s. And this is the perfect balance of streetable use, but Clearly, there's not that much rain tread here, so this is definitely gonna be more for, uh, you know, just giving us some good grip. Without further ado, we're basically just gonna be getting rid of all of this up here. Gotta get her up in the air. Get the jackpot. The beauty of working on a car that was pretty low miles and garage kept all of its life is that, I mean, there's some rust here and there to be expected, but most of this stuff doesn't look like seized, entirely gone. Am I going the right way? Yep. Most of it's probably not even been touched. Yeah, well, I think all of it hasn't ever been touched. Yeah. Like, has it ever even had a brake job? Or like, I guess like a rotor job? Yeah, I mean, I wonder how many times pads have even been done. Right. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, remember a second ago when I said we're not gonna have any issues with anything being seized? Um, well, I guess having a 40,000 mile car doesn't prevent that because this bolt, no matter what we've done, is it, it's not coming out. I don't know why they gotta use a freaking Phillips for uh, these screws. This is what it looks like. This is the one that went down here. And this one, for the life of it, won't move. And unfortunately, it's now gotten to the point where Stripped. Yeah, it's just stripped. Yeah. And it's like that on the other side of the car too. So we probably have to drill this out. <laughs> <laughs> it, only like two minutes into working on the car and we already are here buying tools to extract a failed component. <laughs> but hopefully this is just, you know, a little hurdle at the beginning and then it's just smooth sailing from here. I'm praying this works. Hey! It's like that. Magic. Meanwhile, somebody from McLaren is uh, getting loaded up. Just things that happen here at this household. Also, there's a Taylor Swift flag. So we had to use a screw extractor set. And uh, how you do it is you drill out the center of the screw a little bit. And then this bit widens as it goes into the screw. And then you basically, you loosen it. But it basically gets wedged into the screw and then it removes the remaining piece of it. So you know, clutch today. That, that screw ain't usable anymore, but it's all right. It's out. That's all it's we out. need. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. Right in my lip. All the hardware has all the uh, the factory torque specs with the freaking little like oh, highlighter line, mark. Yeah. That's yeah. so yeah. funny. Look at that. Yeah, even uh, that does too. There's a lot of yellow highlighter all around that we are now disrupting for the first time. Yeah. All right, now the main corporate here, this stupid dust shield. We got a lot of work to do with this boy. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? In I'm three, ready. two, one, voila. Yeah, um, 
It basically would be the same as if we took this whole thing off. Since these bolts right here are kind of inaccessible, we sh pretty much shaved all of it entirely down. But even though that looks awful, trust me, there's going to be a lot of things that this dust shield is going to get in the way with. And now we have just eradicated all of that. A little side quest mod before we continue on to the brakes is I have Jay's Racing Lower Control Arm Ball Joints. Here's our factory one. And then this is the one we're gonna be adding. And basically, once we swap that in, it's hard to visualize, but it is going to push the bottom part of the wheel out like that in theory and give us camber. And because of the aggressive nine and a half wheel setup that we're running, uh, we're gonna need as much camber and help that we could get to clear these fenders, these stock boys. Whenever dealing with your balls, you mm -hmm. gotta have one of these tools. So we are also changing the ball joints then, which is also gonna change the rigidity. I think oh. that, I didn't even realize. Yeah, essentially, yeah. We're changing the camber, but we're also gonna make it a lot more stiff. Like the ball, the steering will feel probably quite a bit better, I bet. This tool clamps in the ball joint. Now we're pushing it and giving it force. So eventually it's gonna have to give in and break off. And that's what we want. Feels like you're gonna break. But there we go. <laughs> Dude, it's magic. It's yeah. crazy how easy this actually like just doing, works. Like, to do that without this is such a pain. Yeah. So, it's just so worth it. Well, you got the right tool for the job. Exactly. Uh-huh. So, this is actually interesting. The other one, the new one, is over to your right. Where these two holes are and then the center point, yeah. this is, like, shifted over, whereas mm -hmm. this is, like, center. The offset right here is going to basically push out the entire hub. So think of it like this is where it was, and then now it's gonna be like this. So it's like yep. adding a little bit of degrees to it. Yeah. But so. like I was saying though, also the new ball joint is probably quite a bit more rigid than the original yeah. one. So the steering is probably gonna be quite a bit better. So, yeah. Voila. All right, out with the old. Look at this, this is a little slug. It's kind of funny, I really thought if I ever sold this car, I would convert back to stock. But as we're doing this, we're discovering that I don't know if that will happen because I definitely don't want to do this brake job again. And it's just frankly a downgrade for whoever would get that. Like, I'm sorry for the purists out there, but this is gonna be better. And second of all, I mean, if I don't do the brakes and I just want to part out the wheels alone, I won't be able to do that because the stock wheels, well, we'll test them out when we're done with these brakes. We'll see if they actually fit, but I got five on it saying that they won't. What is that? Uh-oh. Dude, I don't know what it'd be hitting. This corner right here. That. Oh. Oh, that little bit. That's it. <laughs> That's the only piece. Ha ha. Ha ha. <laughs> no noise. All of this work that you guys do could be pointless if you guys don't make sure your rotors are super clean. We're testing them out for the first time. Just like brake cleaner. It's called brake cleaner for a reason. And uh, I mean, you could already see what is on there, but Basically, if they're dirty, you can go and test them out and then you can get rotor warp, which is gonna feel like a jittery bump as you go out. And yeah, that would just defeat the entire purpose of installing all of this if you just destroy your rotors on the first go. Ooh, <laughs> that is much different Dude, than stock. Look at that. Big red banana. They look so good. Dude, that's nuts. We're only doing the fronts on this car just because it only needs it with how light this thing is. Sadly, the rear calipers are not gonna look as nice as this. <laughs> They're a little... A little dull. dinky. Yeah. So, uh, you know, maybe we'll powder coat those red to match this someday, but for now, this is gonna be just, you know, this side is gonna be its glory shot. Look at all this pad life we got. Yeah. We'll be good for a while. So the pads are locked in place. The caliper and the rotor is fully installed, as well as magically, we got the other side done. Zach's trying to take off the wheel. They're stuck on there. I, I wonder if they've ever been taken off. That's true. I don't know if I, yeah, I don't think I've taken these wheels off yet. I mean, they probably have, but yeah, dang. <laughs> Just keep kicking. Man. Oh, it's coming. There we go. Yeah. We're taking all of them off because we are going to bleed the entire system. 
Man, yeah, we might have to powder coat this caliper back here. This is clearly doesn't look right, but trust me, S2000 ownership, like this, this will work. It's all right. I'm actually so excited to do this. Oh, dude. It's like, it's tough to tell, but this fluid is like black. Like this is bad. I have an ABS light on and I hope that this is the uh, culprit right here. We'll see. We're gonna put some dot pour, more uh, track oriented fluid in there. Actually, we should put the, should put the ghost Sour Patch Kids flavor. Yeah, there you see go. how that stops. <laughs> So it's nighttime, we've done the hard work, the system is bled, at least we, we hope it's bled, I mean it, the pedal feels good enough. And now we're on to dessert, which is putting the raise stickers on our CE28s. Zach has done his work in learning Japanese, and he <laughs> is reading the freaking- See anything like this? The prompts right here. Sample image. It's those two? Yep. How do you know? Because I looked at the wheel on here. They're exactly going, in I mean, that spot from the valve stem? Yep. There are oh. two from it, and then this, oh. <laughs> Yeah, don't lose that in there. That's a lot of freaking Spokes. depth. <laughs> yeah. Brand new C28 Club Racer 2s, and now they are stickered up. It just adds character to these wheels, and it's gonna go sick with that red. I'm gonna truth. A lot of people love to do bronze or gold or whatever, but I wanted diamond black just because I just genuinely love diamond black for a lot of occasions. But because I'm gonna be for now rocking with the silver paint on my car, I just, when it comes to like bronze wheels on like a silver car, like to me it's like two different types of metal finishes and they kind of clash. So I think this look is gonna be a lot more, I don't know, just simplistic. And uh, plus we get the red stickers, so. <laughs> Not quite. Alright. Uh oh. Those don't fit. Oh no. Oh man. <laughs> We're gonna need a spacer. If you guys didn't get the memo, um, these aren't clearing the calipers because the wheel's just not flush onto there. Wow. That sucks. I thought I did my research and I asked the right people and they told me that this would work but apparently not. So we're gonna need a spacer, but that's not exactly ideal because now we're gonna have more wheel poke and hopefully that doesn't rub. And it's also not ideal because uh, I have nothing else to freaking put the car in the ground. Yeah, the car is literally Dude, stuck here. Dude, the car is here. stuck here, holy crap. Um, Cause there's no way in the world. Let's just see. <laughs> no way, dude. Dude, can you imagine? <laughs> mm, no. No, no. Way. It won't go on the center because the caliper is blocking. It. <laughs> oh man. Well, no dude, way. we're screwed. Do we have what? What's the bolt pattern? Uh, it should be five by one fourteen. Okay. What? Do you have any other wheels that are that size? I can see if I have any other spacers that'll work for that. Or that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, the whole day just for that. So we found a temporary solution based on what I have. I obviously do not have the perfect size spacers but I have some big boys and these will work temporarily because they are five by 114 and they have their own studs to which I can now lug on my wheels properly. Obviously, <laughs> this is like over an inch. So we're gonna have some poke, but it doesn't matter because all that matters in the specific scenario right now is that I can get this car out of the garage and get my other cars that are sitting outside for this car back in here and you know that we could just kind of at least carry on with things. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly, it's not even like Dude, that bad. Yeah, I know, like this is like, if this was a drift car, it is not even that bad. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that I'm happy about is that in this scenario, we happen to do brakes and wheels first before lowering the car and adding coilovers. So hopefully when we lower her on the ground, like it, it should, you know, clear. <laughs> Dude, it looks funnier on camera. Dude, it, it looks like a drift car. It also looks like some sort of freaking like off-road monster machine. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely looks mean. Yeah, a lot like more it, aggressive it, than before. Yeah, it was very dinky before, but now this thing looks like it's about to like prowl something. Yeah, this is to be continued. Yeah, there's definitely some air in the system, I would say. I think so. 
This thing is breathing. Oh, you just like siphoned all of it out of the freaking the master. 